What's going on, Deeprof Nation? I'm Joe, this is Deeprof Gaming. Thank you for stopping by. Today, we're gonna talk about what I would change if I were Bandai for a day. Now, I'm gonna just lead in with the fact that I am not Bandai. I have no power over whether these changes get made or not. Nothing I could bring up in this video uh, is guaranteed to change or anything like that. All y'all Bandai spies that are watching this though, if you think that these ideas are good and you want to talk, you can go ahead and email me. Info's in my channel description. Now, today we're going to talk specifically about Dragonstones and Summons and pretty much everything around those. Now, there is a lot for me to cover about what I would change in Dokkan Battle, so that's why this series is going to be broken up. That's why it's going to be weekly because I just have a lot to talk about. I have a lot of opinions um, and a lot of observations from other gacha games that make them have a little bit more staying power over something like Dokkan Battle as people start to learn more about how the game works. Now, the main issue that I see when I look at Dokkan Battle and we look at things like Dragonstones and summons in general is that the game is not free to play friendly. You get through story mode, Cool, there's like 675 to 1,000 Dragonstones in their total between missions and just completing all the difficulties. You've got your boss rushes. Now once you can complete those, there's a bunch of Dragonstones there, and then there's a smattering of Dragonstones and Dokkan events and things like Strike events. So you can have like maybe an initial burst of like 1,500 to 2,000 stones once you've completed everything for the first time, and that's assuming that you don't have to spend any stones to be able to complete all that. You follow so far? So, you've got maybe 2,000 stones. There's not a whole lot of summoning when you put it into perspective. I know people that have spent more than three times that amount of stones on a single banner. That's not really a whole lot to guarantee that you get the kind of units that you want. I'm obviously referring to my notebook. <laughs> But one of the other gacha games that I have played is Bleach Brave Souls, and one of the things that I think that this game does very, very well is that it treats their free-to-play players very well. Uh, they do things like if you pull unnecessary duplicates of a card, you get things like training items or uh, their version of potential orbs, things like that. Like You always get something from a summon even if you do not get what you want. The other thing that they do that I think that Dokkan Battle could take a big big hint from. Anytime you max out a character's level, you get their version of Dragonstones, right? So think about it like this. If you were to max out an R rarity character, you'd get 10 Dragonstones. That's pretty cool, right? If you max out a TUR character, you'd get 75. What the heck? That's like totally worth it, right? <laughs> Now, obviously their conversions are a little bit different. Uh, for them, it's 250 stones to do a multi-summon. So if you just take pretty much everything that I just said and divide it by five in general, that would be what you would get. But that's still two dragon stones for max leveling in our unit. Just to kind of double back on what I said, summon rewards, right? Like beyond just getting stuff if you pull duplicate characters, usually during specific banners or during celebrations in Bleach Brave Souls, you get some extra stuff when you summon. Uh, I don't know what all of them do, because I'm not nearly as immersed in that game uh, time-wise as I am in Dokkan Battle, but you get things like their version of potential orbs, you get experience, like training items, things like that. There's a lot that you get. Uh, they have accessories, but that's because they're gameplay is very, very different. There are very different things that depend on it, but imagine if you did a multi-summon and instead of just getting characters, you got things like training items, Kai's, uh, potential orbs, support items, training locations like that every single time. That'd be pretty cool, right? And one of the other things that a lot of different gacha games do I, f I feel a fair bit better than Dokkan Battle is their login rewards. Now, they obviously all have different systems and mechanics for how you move through the game, but you'll get things like extra stamina, right? Like, imagine if you could log into the game, get a whole bunch of extra stamina and be like, oh, I need to run this Dokkan event 11 times in order to get 
the medals that I need to awaken this character, to put them on this team, to do this other thing for this other character. Like that's that's the nature of Dokkan Battle in general. But imagine if you were enabled to do that extra stuff right from the beginning of your day when you logged in. That'd be pretty cool, right? And while Zenian friend points in the proposed new version of Dokkan Battle when we get to the end of this series uh, would have a little bit more use, they are currently not particularly useful, but they're also necessary. Friend points and Zenny I think are a big problem in Dokkan Battle because there's not a huge easy way to get a lot of either in a short amount of time, but a lot of things rely on it and a lot of things are, are, are kind of expensive. Uh, like I did my the Easy A Piccolo and getting him to his second to last Extreme Z Awakening cost 9 million Zenny. And where you, if you've been training and awakening and training and awakening a whole lot of units and you didn't use one of your Purunga wishes for a whole bunch of Zenny, you're kind of up shit creek. But you can blow through a whole lot of Zenny really quick. And any of you that have pulled LR Broly and awakened him all the way know that pain well. Now one of the last things that I'm going to mention in this video is celebrations in general. And I'm going to say before I go any further that the 250 million celebration and the three year anniversary, the two celebrations that I have been an active Dokkan battle player for were awesome. Bandai did a lot of things right, but I also feel like there were a lot of things that they could have done better, done better on for us. Now, again, I have to compare to Bleach Brave Souls. Their three year anniversary was right around the same time as Dokkan Battle's three year anniversary. And the differences were astounding, guys. They were crazy. If, if any of you play Bleach Brave Souls, I want you to comment in the description who you think did it better after I make these comparisons. Dokkan or Bleach Brave Souls? So, with Dokkan Battle, we got one free unit. Or technically we got two free units during the three year celebration. We got the traveling through space Goku, and we also got the Easy A Kid Gohan. We also got the Genu Force, which was also awesome. Now, when I logged in to Bleach for the three year anniversary, and I started playing just before their three year anniversary started because I didn't know it was coming. But I got a six star 100% awakened linked character. And if you don't know what that is, that's effectively their equivalent of getting a 100% awakened LR unit for free. I didn't have to grind anything out, I didn't have to do anything, I didn't have to feed any training items into him, I could use him right away. Boom. That was it. It's just for logging in, okay? Now, one of the other things that I think they do a lot better is their step ups for their multi summons. Now, we get discounted step ups, and that's pretty awesome, okay? Like the, the three pulls at 30 stones and the tickets that we get, that's pretty great but there are no guarantees on those summons, guys. If you spend enough stones on a banner to summon on it 100 times, and the unit that you want doesn't show up, that's a huge issue, okay? And we're gonna talk about those specific issues in a later video. When you compare it again to Bleach Brave Souls, they had step ups, right? And once you got to step up stage seven, right? So once you did seven multis, you were guaranteed guaranteed to pull one of the three featured banner units during that multi. I, like, that just speaks for itself, guys. Now, this is not me saying that I'm going to quit playing Dokkan Battle and just play Bleach Brave Souls. No, that's not what you guys want, <laughs> okay? I'm making these videos hoping, I guess, that someone over at Bandai or someone that knows someone over at Bandai watches them and kind of like takes a hard look at their competition and steps it up. Because that's really, as, as Dokken Battle players, that's what we need, is that we need these games to compete and we need Bandai not to just kind of rely on the name of Dragon Ball Z to get away with being lazy. And that's really, it's really what it is, guys, is that they are just not putting in the effort to make the game better and more consistent for us. Because there are times when the game is really, really good, and there are times when it's not. And that's the whole issue that I've noticed being a Dokken Battle player and doing this on YouTube uh, 
for both my own enjoyment and for you guys. So guys, like I said, this is the first video in the series. It's a little bit shorter than I thought it was gonna be, but that's okay. I'm gonna let you guys know what we're gonna be talking about next. That way you can leave your suggestions, your questions, your comments in the comments section below. But before I talk about what we're gonna talk about next, go ahead and smash that like button for me. And if you have not yet become a part of hashtag Nation, go ahead and slam that subscribe button too. Hit that notification bell so that you never miss one of these videos and you never miss a live stream. I do try to live stream about once a week just so that I can interact with you guys in real time and be able to talk with you about things that you wanna talk about. I don't always play Dokkan Battle when I live stream. I like to play games that I enjoy too and I wanna share that enjoyment with Deep Rope Nation. So, now that you're liked, subscribed, and notified, anytime that I go live or anytime that I post a new video, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna talk about next. Next, we're gonna talk about training, awakening, and the general grind of the game, and how that could be a whole lot better. I'll see you next time, guys. Stay awesome.